So in single replacement reactions, you have an element all by itself, and you have a compound. That element by itself is going to try to cut into this compound and replace that element in the compound. If it can, then we have another element off to the side and a new compound. So it's element plus compound yields element and compound. Some of your single replacement reactions can be no reaction. This is the only type that we're going to see that you can write no reaction for. All right, so the first rule is metals replace less active metals. All right, what does that rule mean? So we look at our element that's by itself, magnesium. Magnesium has a positive charge, positive two to be exact. It wants to be part of that compound. So it's gonna try to replace the other positive one, which is a metal. So magnesium is trying to kick out zinc. So the element by itself always wants to be part of the compound. So we have to look at the activity series. This will be provided on a test. So we find magnesium and we try to find what it's trying to kick out, which is zinc. Magnesium is above zinc. Therefore, magnesium can kick out zinc. Lithium is at the top of the chart. So lithium can kick out everything, but nothing can kick out lithium. Same thing, gold is at the bottom of the chart. So gold can't ever be a part of a reaction. If you notice, these ones on the bottom are our precious metals. They're precious metals because they don't react with things very well, which is nice because that's how they last for so long. You don't wash your hands and be like, ah, oh, my hand, it's reacting. No, you're good because it won't react with the water. All right, so back to this problem, our magnesium is kicking out zinc so zinc gets kicked to the curb magnesium combines with nitrate just like before you have to check the charges magnesium was a plus two and nitrates a negative one so those go together like so we do not carry over any subscripts unless they're part of that polyatomic ion so this three got carried over but the two did not the only reason that that two is on the product side is because that's how magnesium and nitrate go together. You then balance the equation, and in this case, the equation is already balanced. All right, so for the next one, magnesium is trying to kick out lithium. Look on the activity series. And magnesium is below lithium. So magnesium cannot kick out lithium. So this will be no reaction. I can place magnesium in lithium nitrate, but the magnesium is just going to sit there. No reaction will take place. The second rule is halogens replace less active halogens. Our halogens are on the periodic table, and they're in order of their reactivity. So these will not be given to you in a separate chart because they're already on the periodic table. Notice that fluorine is the most reactive, iodine is the least reactive. So it looks similar to the last problems. We have a metal, or we have a compound and an element. But this time our element is a non-metal, so it has a negative charge. Negative charges kick out negative charges. So chlorine is trying to kick out bromine. So you look on the periodic table, and chlorine is above bromine. So Bromine does get kicked to the curb, and sodium's going to combine with chlorine. Sodium's a plus one, chlorine's a minus one, so it's just NaCl. But you have an element by itself. Remember that all elements by themselves, you have to stop and see if they're one of the seven diatomics. Bromine is, so we need that two there. So to balance this equation, we need two bromines which then causes us to have two sodiums. So then we need two sodiums, which will also fix our fluorine. For the bottom one, fluorine, which is negative, is trying to kick out iodine, which is also negative. So fluorine's trying to kick out iodine. Fluorine is above iodine, so it will happen. Iodine is kicked to the curve, and potassium combines with fluorine. 
each have a charge of one, positive one and negative one. So they go together in a one to one ratio. So next I need to double check that iodine isn't one of the seven and it is because these are all halogens. All the halogens are diatomic. So if you have one of these, you're always going to have a diatomic producing another diatomic if the reaction goes. So for balancing, we need a two in front of our Ki and a two in front of our Kf. Our next rule is metal replaces hydrogen in water to form a hydroxide. You may want to say a metal hydroxide which is a base plus hydrogen. On your activity series, which you would be getting, hydrogen is on the list, but when it's in water, hydrogen can only be replaced through sodium. From sodium and up can replace hydrogen in water. From lithium to the sodium can replace it in an acid. So for that first one, magnesium is trying to kick out hydrogen. For this rule, you may want to star it. You have to think of water as HOH because it's an ionic compound in this problem. So magnesium is trying to kick out that first hydrogen, not the second hydrogen as well. If you don't write it as HOH, 95% of you will mess it up. So. When water is in a single replacement reaction, think of it as HOH. So magnesium is trying to kick out hydrogen. We look on the list and magnesium is below the line. So it's going to have no reaction. For B, calcium is trying to replace hydrogen. Calcium is above the sodium line, in which case it will kick it out. So we have hydrogen gas, and, and then calcium is going to go with hydroxide. Calcium is a plus two, hydroxide is a negative one, so they go together like so. On the side of your paper, it may help if you write the charges and what's going together. Because if you just write CaOH, it will be wrong, no partial credit. It is wrong. That is not how calcium and hydroxide go together. Hydrogen gets the two because it's diatomic. You can then go and balance the equation. We have four hydrogens and two oxygens, so we just need a two here. And now it's balanced. And the last single replacement rule is a metal replaces hydrogen in an acid to form a salt plus hydrogen. So magnesium is trying to kick out hydrogen. Since it's an acid, it will kick out all the hydrogens if it can kick it out. So we look at the chart, and magnesium is above hydrogen down here, which is where the acid line is. As long as it's above this hydrogen, it will kick it out in an acid. So magnesium kicks hydrogen out. Hydrogen's diatomic. And then magnesium combines with sulfate. Magnesium's a plus two, sulfate's a negative two. So we get that. We balance our equation, but in this case, it's already balanced. And then the bottom one, sodium is trying to kick out hydrogen. We look at the list, and hydrogen is down here, sodium's way up there. Sodium can kick out hydrogen in an acid as well as water. So hydrogen gets kicked to the curb, and sodium combines with chlorine. Sodium's a plus one, and chlorine's a minus one, so it's just NaCl. We now balance it. We have two hydrogens, so we need two. And that's two chlorine, so two there, and a two for sodium. Some people always ask if it matters the order that you write them. You could have written NaCl plus H2, and that would have been fine as well. It doesn't matter the order with the plus sign. What does matter is you could not write ClNa plus H2. That is incorrect. The positive ion always goes first. So it must be NaCl, not ClNa. Again, this is wrong and you will not get any credit for that. And the last type is double replacement. 
In a double replacement reaction, your positive and negative ions in a compound are exchanged. So the cation combines with the anion in the other reaction. So A goes with D. You can also see it up here in our animation, our cation goes with our anion in our products. And then our cation goes with the anion of the other reaction. Notice that the cation is always written first in the compound. So outside go together, inside go together. So barium, which has a plus two charge, is combining with carbonate. We don't have to check any charts, assume them to go. So barium combines with carbonate based on their charges. We just need one barium for one carbonate. And then chlorine is going to combine with potassium. Potassium is a plus one and chlorine is a minus one. You have to write the positive charge first. So K combines with Cl. Remember that it is not ClK and it is not K2Cl2. This is our skeleton equation, which we then go back and balance with a two. And now we have equal amounts on both sides. So when I try B and C on your own, restart when you have answers to B and C. So iron went with chlorine, but uh, sulfur is a negative two and iron's a plus two. So iron has to have the same charge as it did on the reactants. So that's gonna be FeCl2. And then hydrogen combined with sulfur to make H2S. Balancing your equation, you have two in front of HCl. For the bottom one, calcium should have went with chloride. Calcium's a plus two, and chlorine's a minus one. And then hydrogen should have went with hydroxide. You could have written HOH, or you could have written H2O. Either way, this is a base because it ends in hydroxide and it's a metal. So metal hydroxides are bases. This is an acid. So when you have an acid and a base, one of your products will always be water. So balancing our equation, we need two chlorines and two waters. Put in pause the video and write your reactants and predict your products for this reaction. Restart when you have your answer. You should have gotten that. KCN plus 10 2 fluoride. That's a double replacement reaction. Potassium went with fluorine and 10 2 went with cyanide. On this set of problems, you're gonna identify the types of reactions. Notice that they are unbalanced, so they're just the skeleton equations. You can use those abbreviations when we're writing them out, but make sure you're using those abbreviations and not made up ones that you've made up yourself. So S for synthesis, D for decomp, SR for single replacement, ER double replacement, or C for combustion. Look back at your notes if you need to. Restart when you have those seven problems done. So for the first one, we have a hydrocarbon and oxygen. Basically, we have an element and a compound, but our element is oxygen, and our compound is a hydrocarbon. Also notice your products are CO2 and water. Therefore, that's a combustion reaction. For two, you have an element and a compound, and you ended with an element and a compound. Notice the aluminum kicked out hydrogen. So that should be single replacement. For number three, we have two compounds that swap partners, and we ended with two compounds. That's double replacement. For four, you have two compounds. You ended with two compounds, so double replacement. For five, you have one product. One product is always synthesis. For six, you have an element and a compound, and you ended with an element and a compound. Notice they swap partners. Just one swap partner, so that's single replacement. And for seven, you have one reactant. It broke apart. That's decomposition. 